Friends, there's something going on in our country right now that not a lot of people know about. It's going on under the radar. It's not being reported enough. And I want you to prepare with something like this. Let's get into what that is and you're gonna be shocked, but if you prepare, it's not a problem. And I'm talking about attacks on our power grid, most specifically substations. I've been digging around recently for news stories, just taking a look at this, and I found something that just popped up recently that is kind of mind blowing. Now remember, my duty on this channel is not to instill fear at all, but just to inform and then help you with strategies to prepare. So recently it was revealed that there is a criminal network of people who are actively trying to attack the power grid in the United States not via computer, but physically. There were some high profile cases in the past, like the gentleman who shot up things in, uh, I think it was South Carolina, but it happens way more, way more than you think. And this criminal network is a network. They are online in chat rooms and on certain websites and forums, actively talking about how to do this. There was a recent investigation by a Northwestern United States power company called Bonneville Power. I believe they're in Tacoma, Washington. And they found a huge network of these criminals talking about this. And the federal government is not reporting on it properly. The Department of Energy is not reporting on it. Actually, they're way under reporting the number of attacks that are happening on power substations. So I want you to search out small local news investigative reporting teams, and you will get a lot more information that way than mostly any other. However, some of these can be manipulated and I'm not ignorant to that fact, but the local news team up in Seattle that is really diving into this has traveled all over the country, including North Carolina, where that one attack took place. And I think they have now 50 investigative small news teams that are looking into all these attacks. And it's happening more and more and more. So according to the Department of Energy, last year there were 20 attacks in the state of Washington and the state of Texas. Those were both tied for second place. And there were over 200 attacks that they reported this year or sorry, in 2023. The local news team up in the Northwest looked at all their local news and attacks on those power grids and only half of them were reported by the Department of Energy. So there could be upwards, maybe say four, 500 attacks just in 2023 alone, physical attacks, not even cyber attacks on the power grid. That means it's really time to prepare. Are you prepared for that to happen? Because each power substation, if it goes out, it needs to be repaired. Maybe it's repaired in 24 hours, 48 hours, but each one of those substations can service about 40,000 people. Are you prepared? Do you have something for your home to back it up if you need it? If you need your refrigerator to work, if you need any medical equipment to work, if you need anything, you know, super important to be able to live in today's modern society, is that backed up in any way? Maybe it's with a generator, but if the power is out, the gas stations are gonna be out of power and you're not gonna be able to get gas. Hopefully you save some up. With something like this, you've got the sun. So friends, those criminals are showing that it's really easy to take out these substations and not even with advanced equipment. Something as simple as, Hey, I'm not gonna mention it because I don't want anybody to get an idea from watching this video, but it's super simple to do. A lot of these substations are only protected by a chain link fence and maybe a little barbed wire on the top. And that is fairly easy to bypass. I also want you to keep in mind what's happening on our Southern border. There are some bad actors coming through there. It was revealed that there was what, 161 people on the terrorist, terrorist watch list that were apprehended last year? That is a ridiculous amount. And I'm sure they're probably working alongside of these people attacking substations because that is an easy way to disrupt our society because we all rely so heavily on electricity. 
So I wanna give you practical information and solutions to help your family prepare for anything like that if it happens to you. On our channel, we have built numerous solar power systems for our home. We've done it ourselves, and I know each one of you can do it as well. You can see the array behind me. This is a medium-sized system, and we didn't start off with all of this. We've slowly added to it over time as we find the funds to do so. So if you're concerned about that, you can certainly start small and build on it from there. Start small for something that might just power a refrigerator and a freezer and maybe a CPAP machine if you need that. And then you can build an add-on from there. That's the beautiful thing about these modern DIY systems and the type of inverters that are available to you. Let me take you inside of our home and explain what we have powering our house. But before I do that, I wanna show you the small system that powers our barn and well. And it easily fit on our chicken coop, which is in the perfect position for the sun in our area. This is a small 2800 watt solar array. There's some panels on the other side that you don't see. And this wasn't very expensive at all. And it powers our well pump, our jet pump for our rain tanks, and anything that I can run here in the barn. Here we are in the house. I've got two EG4 6000 XP inverters. They are six kilowatts each. That is plenty for my house and I'll explain what my house uses in a minute. But we've also got a stack of batteries. Now, I did not start off with all of these batteries. Over time, I've continued to buy them as I come into money, like I mentioned before. So I save a little bit and then I'm able to grab another battery. Currently, I have nine of them for about 46 kilowatts of storage. But when I originally got the system, I only started with two batteries. My entire house is electric except for my stove. For that, I use propane. But everything else, the heating and cooling, the water heating, the washer and dryer, all of it is electric. And my house is about 1,800 square feet. Our well pump is out at the barn, so it runs off of that system up there. And that system is about 100 yards away from the house. So that's why I separated the two systems. But if you go and watch this playlist up here, this will explain everything that I've done here on the property, including how to wire these, how to put this system in. We originally started off with a grow watt system, which was a 240 volt system that used a balancing transformer to split things into two different legs. That system works great, and I still have the equipment for that. That equipment is going to go on a small cabin on my property. But these 6,000 XP's are doing an amazing job and running flawlessly. If you have any specific questions about my system, about what we've done here in our homestead, and how to afford a small system to start, let me know in the comments section below. And I have links to all of our equipment that we use for our barn and our home in the description below the video. So friends, like I mentioned, it's about preparing, not fear, not stoking fear, but about knowledge and knowing what is going on around you that you might not hear about every day. Or there may be information out there that's being held back from you from certain entities. That's why it's good to glean this information from many different resources. So I hope this information that I'm presenting to you is helpful for you and your family. Now go click on this video right here, which talks about how we charge our batteries in case we have a long period of time without any sun. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.